So, Luki, my final question for you is, in your book, as we discussed in the previous videos, you mentioned that everyone is a salesperson, selling yourself to the employer and focus on your accomplishments. Can you tell us more about how people can sell themselves when they're writing their resume or their, their cover in their, or when they are writing their cover letter? Sure. Uh, I mean, I never really liked sales, right? It seemed like it was a, a bit of a, I never kind of a <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but one one of my um, mentors actually provided me some really good advice when it came to sales, where he said, "Well, you don't like selling, right?" I'm like, "No, I don't at all, right?" But you like problem solving. It's like absolutely, mm -hmm. I love figuring out, making solutions to to uh, people's problems. So he said, "Well, think of sales as problem solving." With a price attached to it, <laughs> right? Okay. So uh, by doing that, that is uh, a, a good way to help kind of sell yourself. So when you think of that in the context of a resume, you're wanting to to suggest, okay, how do you solve the company's problem in in mm -hmm. that role, um, and sell yourself and add the value, right? So they are hiring for a particular purpose, right? Yeah. Maybe it's for this title, for the role, maybe it's a, a front-end developer, maybe it's marketing coordinator, maybe it's a whatever it is, right? Yeah. But it's not so much the role that they're hiring for, it's a, a solution or a problem to be solved. Yeah. Why are they hiring uh, for a developer? Why are they hiring for a marketing person, right? Well, it's because they need to, to, to develop this functionality to, to bring in more clients. They need to create these social media posts to, uh, again, get more clients. And if you can be the solution to their problem, well, why wouldn't I hire you, <laughs> right? Mm. Um, so in terms of writing a resume, then the, the easiest way that I find is taking a look at the job description and basically do what I call reverse engineering it, mm -hmm. right? So you can, the easiest way to do it is take your current resume and blank out all the bullets, right? You keep all the, the administrative stuff like the uh, date and time of, of sorry, the, the date and month and the location and titles of all the different places right. you've had. But for your um, bullet points, you replace it with the responsibilities, the requirements, and the qualifications qualifications they're asking for in the job description, mm -hmm. right? So if you grab the first bullet and and copy it and you paste it and then you tweak and paraphrase it, right? Because you don't want to plagiarize, right? Mm -hmm. Plagiarism is bad. Yeah. But if you tell them this is how I can solve your problem, right? This mm -hmm. is the solution that I have then um, you're basically selling yourself and then do that for the next bullet, the next bullet, the next bullet, and the next bullet. And by having done that, you reverse engineered what they're asking for in the job description. And yep. your resume says, this is what I can offer. This is how I can solve your uh, problems. And I, I would probably argue that resumes probably aren't the best way to find a role, right? Because mm -hmm it's so saturated with folks yes. where uh, I think there's hundreds, sometimes thousands of people All applying right. to yeah. a role uh, that really, if you want to kind of sell yourself, the best way is to be networking, right? Yeah. And um, even practicing interviews, because mm -hmm. if you spend so long to apply and, and put all this effort to land an interview, you don't want to squander it as well. So you yeah. should also be practicing interview questions. Yeah. Like, tell me about yourself. You should be able to answer that question and give me at least an eight, if not a nine out of 10 question off the bat, right? Yeah. If you have to do the typical student thing and cram the night before, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's not necessarily going to be oh, the best and most sustainable way to yeah. do it. Yeah. Uh, so if you practice now and get yourself a little bit better and, and improve, then that will be su such a uh, better way to approach things. So for, for selling yourself on your resume, uh, reverse engineering, that's probably what, where you want to focus on telling them exactly what they're asking for on the job description. Yeah. But I would suggest that networking and interviews are, are probably the better That's time right. or the better place to spend your time to help your resume stand out even further, um, not just based on the content, but on uh, the other connections and other areas that you can provide value from. And let's talk about chat GDP because mm. technology is not going anywhere. Everyone is nope. using it. I've even heard some career coaches literally explaining how to use chat gdp but they're all saying that it's kind of a first draft mm -hmm. use it then customize it put your personal touch and you know so that people can hear your voice and not the machine so what mm -hmm. are your thoughts about that 
Yeah, I would agree with that. When starting with chat GPT or, or AI in general, because there's a lot of different language models out there, yes. then it, it, it's a good starter. For those that are really new to job searching, it's a great first draft. But when you look at it, for anybody that's actually been on the hiring side, yeah. a lot of it is super generic, super yeah. without context and, and not very helpful. So you might get a five out of 10, a six yeah. out of 10 at most. And to make it a seven, eight, nine out of 10, you mm -hmm. really have to add your personal experiences, your personal touch into it. Yeah. Now, the other part is like chat GPT or, or AI can't uh, necessarily what they call like put lipstick on a pig. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. if, if you don't have the experiences, if you don't have the qualification, if you haven't done this stuff, mm -hmm. then no matter what chat GPT does, whatever prompt engineering you do, yeah. it won't help it. So you yeah. need to go out there, build the, the portfolio, have the experiences, have the credentials and, and yeah. have the strengths that it can actually put into something. And when you can answer it appropriately, it's there. And I mean, <clears throat> I have a lot of conversations with folks on AI. And uh, one of the things that we d decided on is we said that that AI actually won't uh, replace your job. Yeah. Right. But someone who knows how to use AI better than you will. <laughs> no. right? So it, as, as you said, it's, it's not going anywhere, um, no. but it's a tool. Like whoever can use these tools better will be better off, right? Yes. And it's up to us to uh, basically get more familiar with these tools. So I wouldn't be surprised if just like coding is being introduced to the education system, yes. things like AI prompt engineering mm -hmm. <laughs> will also be yeah. added into the, uh, into the education yeah. system too. So I'm a big fan get your feet wet uh, yeah. and learn how to use it to your advantage. But yeah. that's the key part. Have it teach you, have teach it you. get you better, right? Yeah. Because the, the point of um, AI is not to replace you. It's to help you get better even faster. Yeah. At least that's from my perspective. Yeah. Those are great tips, Loki. And with that, uh, my interview comes to an end. I really enjoyed the conversation and great tips. So for the audience, We've been uh, talking with uh, Loki, Lu Lu <laughs> sorry for uh, that, uh, for the past week. And I posted all the videos so you can like, share. And if you have any more questions, uh, you can reach to us on our socials. And again, thank you very much. And let's keep in touch. Bye, everyone. Bye.